The HeroScape community is up in arms today after Renegade Game Studios made pretty much the most obvious announcement on the face of the planet. This is nice. Now for those of you who haven't been keeping up with the news of my favorite victim of capitalist necromancy, Renegade Game Studios, who's pretty much like Hasbro's sloppy seconds company, is taking up the IP of HeroScape. If you don't know what HeroScape is, it's this board game that I was really into as a little kid and got back into as an adult. The thing is, it died 13 years ago. Last year, Hasbro subsidiary Avalon Hill tried bringing HeroScape back through a Haslab campaign, and it kind of failed enormously. The name of their campaign was Age of Annihilation, and the announcement today was that Renegade was going to be bringing Age of Annihilation back. Now, this is the most obvious decision on the face of the planet, because Avalon Hill already did most of the legwork in terms of design for Age of Annihilation. It would make zero sense whatsoever to trash all of those design plans and for Renegade Game Studios to do something else. The reason the HeroScape community is up in arms, though, is because Age of Annihilation was insanely controversial. For one, when it came out that the game wouldn't have painted minis, we lost like half the community. The amount of debates over whether or not people think that the minis should be painted ranged the entire Age of Annihilation campaign last year, and I'm sure those discussions are going to be had again this year. The fact of the matter is, it's 2023. The fact that we got painted minis even in 2004 is a miracle of exploiting slave labor in the global south. The other point of contention from Age of Annihilation was that people really hated the units. Avalon Hill took a big step in terms of the design decisions when they came to designing their units for the HeroScape relaunch. In the OG version of HeroScape, it was the battle of all time. And I think it was Milton Bradley. And Milton Bradley, who were the original developers of the game, took a lot of very popular tropes. You had not the Matrix, you had not Legolas, you had Samurai, you had Knights, you had World War II soldiers. You had very recognizable tropes and units that you could use in your armies, which a lot of people say was a huge draw for them. It sounds a lot more appealing when you're playing this war game and you're saying, oh, we're doing samurai versus World War II soldiers versus we're doing cyberpunk furries versus space pirates. Okay, cyberpunk furries versus space pirates actually sounds dope. But the moral of the story is a lot of people were really upset by the major departure in design decisions that Avalon Hill took. Now, I actually did an interview with the lead designer and head of marketing of Avalon Hill, and they said that we have to ensure that we're putting a certain amount of vulnerability and trademark protection mm -hmm. on the stuff that we're generating. We had to sit there and generate ownable IP, ownable story, mm -hmm. ownable factions, you know, visuals that were new and different so that those could be protected mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and build on a future for HeroScape. You can't really trademark not Legolas, and you can't really trademark not the Matrix. From a business perspective, it honestly just makes sense. And personally, I thought all the new units were really cool, so I'm pretty excited. And the last major reason why people were upset about this is because it's not a reprint of the original Rise of the Valkyrie set, or really any classic HeroScape. I am 100% convinced that a huge portion of the community would not be happy unless we got a direct reprinting of the original HeroScape units. But that's the thing about these things. The HeroScape community is so passionate about this game because they've been keeping it alive for the past 13 years, no decision Renegade Game Studios could have made would have been the correct decision. You're not gonna make everyone happy. The only correct announcement is saying the game's coming back. Any more information we're gonna get is going to splinter the community into more and more opinionated little nuances. Personally, I'm stoked that they're bringing Age of Annihilation back. Like I said, I thought the units were really cool. Anyone who watched my channel and kept up with my HeroScape coverage knows that I love the Clockwork Combine. I think they are an incredibly cool concept, and I really look forward to being able to actually acquire them now. It's gonna be kind of awkward for the people who bought the third-party proxies, <laughs> that were announced like at the beginning of this year. Maybe you'll be able to use them. I don't know. If you came to this video looking for any more information, unfortunately we don't have it. Hi, Editing Gremlin Austin here. As I was putting this video together, Scott G from Renegade just announced that they are going to be using all of the figures shown during the campaign. That does include the stretch goal figures, so like the reimagining of Sergeant Drake Alexander, Evil Raylan, Sonlin 2.0, all of the Evil Valkyrie, they will all be included in some way, shape, and form.
rendering the entire concept of this video bullshit. It looks like Renegade's keeping tight-lipped about this project until probably 2024. That's kind of what the rumor mill is stating, which honestly, I'm not really mad about. It's been 13 years. I would rather have them take their time, do it right, not get expectations up and have it be delayed a little bit than them rush it and the whole thing is just absolutely screwed. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I know that's kind of cringe to say, but I do genuinely want to know what people think about this announcement. Are you stoked Age of Annihilation's coming back? Do you wish they would have reprinted the old master set, even though let's be real, logistically that's gonna be impossible? I don't know, let me know. And I'll stop taking up your time and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>